Let's model and texture a wooden pallet. Uh, here's a reference image that you can download from a link in the description. Just bring it into Blender and let's get started. This is a very easy to do. All right, so what we've got is we've got a number of top wooden panels here. And this is a view from sort of the front. So the top wooden panels are there. And then we have three wooden panels underneath, as you can see here. And we've got three panels there like that. All right, so let's just go ahead and do this. I'm going to bring in a plane, get the approximate size. I'm going to rotate X 90, the scale this in the Z, and line it up to some extent on the diagram, scaling the X, something like that. Okay, I'm going to give this some thickness here, not too thick, something like that. Let's take it Alt N, recalculate outside in case it's flipped. And we have our first panel here. Okay, it's approximate thickness there. Okay, I'm going to take this actually and bring it up to the top. And we're going to get a number of them. You could just copy them down, and that's probably a good way of doing it. But I'm going to array them. So I want to do it in the Z, so I'm going to hold Shift and I'm gonna to pull to the left to get the approximate position, and I'm gonna zero out the X, so we're just doing this in, in the Z direction. All right, so there's two of them. Let's increase and see how close we are. I want seven of them, and I'm just going to hold Shift and pull this back a little bit. All right, so there are our seven panels like that. To make it look a little bit better, I'm going to add the cavity shader and I'm also going to add a bevel. And I'll turn this the segments up to 3 and the amount down to 0 0.01. So it's just a small bevel. It looks a little smoother. Okay, so we have the tops. Let's go ahead and do these pieces here. All right, so I'm going to bring in another plane. I mean, you could be using a cube for this. I'm going to scale it down like this. I'm going to rotate X 90. And I'm going to pull it out in front just so I can see it a little bit better. Scale it in the X. So we have this. I'm going to drag this piece up to the top here. Take these two edges, or these two vertices actually, Pull them down. Now, they don't have to snap or anything. I mean, there is some imperfection in this. Let's do something like that. And then I'll bring it under. And I'll give it a little bit of, of depth this way. And just compare to the diagram. Okay, something, something like that. Okay, I want that bevel on there as well, so I'm going to add a bevel. I'll come up to 3, 0 0.01. Okay, so I want three of these. I think for this I will copy. I'm going to do this in edit mode. I'm going to come into edit mode, A to select it all, and shift D to duplicate. And pull this one roughly into the middle. Shift D. And one more like that. Okay, so we have the tops and we have three of these and now we need three of these pretty similar to the top itself. So what I think I'll do is I'll take the top here and I'm just going to duplicate that down to here and we're going to get rid of some and we're going to keep some. We want three. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the array and I'm going to come in and I want to keep the top one. I'm going to press 3 for face selection. I'll select a bit of this and a bit of that, this one and this one. Control L will link everything uh, connected to that face, X faces, and get rid of them. That is it for the main part of the model. I'm going to now, uh, we don't really need this anymore, so I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to take this, rotate X90, 
minus from the front and just pull this up above the X as if it's sitting on the ground. And so we have our basic palette. And then it's just a question of if you want to add nails to this. And to do that, so I'm going to add a circle. And I'll choose 16 vertices. Just pull this up. Go into edit mode and scale it down. F to make face. I'll keep scaling. And then press G and pull this over. And then scale a bit more until we get the size of the nail that we would want about maybe maybe that big a little bit smaller period key to focus on that i'm going to extrude down delete that face take the top Control b and i'll put one more segment i'll shade smooth that i'll go into edit mode and i'm going to pull that down until it makes contact and it's somewhat embedded okay now I just want that above this piece so it looks like it goes to the top into this one at that point I'm just going to shift D and G and pull this down and have it off a little bit so that it's not perfectly straight duplicate it again and just go ahead and keep duplicating it and don't worry if it's a little bit off because that makes it look a little bit more realistic. It's not perfectly in a straight line, perfectly at the same spot. Okay. We will, however, mirror these over to the other side. So there is a little bit of symmetry here. You don't have to, but I probably will. So there's that. Okay, my 3D cursor is still in the middle, so I should be able to, I believe, to just mirror those over. And it looks like that. You can decide if you want to put them in the, along here as well, or anywhere else. Okay, I'll take this and I'll shade smooth. I'll just shade smooth all these pieces. Okay, just like that. Now, at this point, I'm going to take uh, the nails, and for the nails, we're going to create a material that's just going to be black. I'm going to click New, Nails. I'll scroll down. I'm going to make these almost black, and I'll scroll down. The metallic goes all the way up, and I'll bring them, we're going to bring the roughness up a little bit as well. Like that. Let's just come over to here. And this is what we're going to get. It's a little bit tough to see. But, uh, all right. Now, let's take the arrays. Let's apply that. This one is just copied. This one is just copied. So I'm going to take everything now, all of the wood, and I'm going to control J. I'm not going to take the nails and put them in or anything like that now. All right, let's head over to the UV editing window. And uh, let's make sure that we've got all of that selected. I'm going to press U, Smart UV Project. I'm going to give it an island mar margin of 0 0.03 and press OK. And this is what we have. I'll, um, let's see, let's, let's, let's pack the islands. Let's do that. Now let's give this a try with a texture on here. Uh, just before we do that, however, we'll go over the shading tab. But let's before we do that, let's uh, double check that nothing is facing outwards. It turns out that these ones are, so let's come in, Alt and recalculate outside for everything. All right. So for a material, let's put on a simple wood material and test that out. All right, let's click new and type in wood. And then to do this, we're going to select the principal BSDF and press shift control T and that'll open up this window. And now we're going to navigate to a wood material. So let's see if I can just find one. All right, this is the wood material that we're going to use. And I'm going to link you to this. We've got color displacement. We really don't need that normal roughness. And we can just uh, we can just 
go ahead and select all of these actually and principal texture setup give it a second and this is this is what we're getting here now what we can do is I'm going to do this in Eevee so I'm not going to use the displacement let's get rid of that and let's get rid of that and I'm also going to do the height of this differently so I'm going to get rid of the normal map and I'm going to get rid of the normal itself and I no longer like the way this is connected so I'm going to get rid of that and then I'm keeping the roughness for the moment and I'm going to plug that in and I'm going to plug this in all right now let's have a look at this just before we start making a couple of changes let's come over here to the to the settings I'm gonna stick on Eevee um, I don't know if I'm gonna actually render this but if I did I'll do it at about 150 I want to click here for ambient occlusion click that you see a bit of a shadow I'm gonna change this 0 0.2 to 1 and just watch it even darker and this factor I'm gonna to change to 2 even darker so that will help give us some effects I'll click on bloom in case we do anything like that in the in the lighting if we did that I'm gonna leave it like that now let's go over to UV editor and let's switch this to the material preview and this is what we have here what you can then do because of the way we did this with smart UV project is you can take all of this and rotate 90 and see if you get a better result and I think we do I think that's looking fine pretty much and so that is the effect that I'm, I'm going to go for now the next thing I'm going to do is go back to the shading tab and let's do a little bit more work here let's control plus and let's sort of fake some bump coming out of the base color here so I'm going to add a color ramp down here, take the color, put it into the color ramp, just move that over, and then I'm going to add a vector bump. Take the color into the height, take the normal and plug it in. Now this is set at 1 right now, give it a second you can see that it's quite quite bumpy I'm gonna bring this down to 0 0.15 maybe even 0 0.1 to sort of simulate the bump in there it's up to you if you like that effect I probably would actually go to 0 0.1 so that is okay there so we have some sort of texture to this and really the last thing that I would probably do on this is to add a grunge map to give it some imperfect more imperfections whether it looks like oil stains or dirt this particular wood is great because it already looks dirty and that's fine what I didn't do however is I didn't um, make a change to the wood I didn't deform the wood or anything you could come in here you could add edge loops and then pull some vertices around and bend this like for example take this one and rotate in this in the rotate in the Z just a little bit you know just to get it off kilter and and have some deformities to the wood but I'm not, I'm not gonna bother to do that you can do that so back here in the shading tab I'm going to add a grunge map to this to give it a little bit more uh, grittiness and dirt that kind of thing so I'm going to add a shift a color mix RGB and I'm going to drop that in there so that still connects the color down there and what I want is another image map here so I'm going to shift a texture image texture and I'm going to search for a grunge map now I have a number of these that I've downloaded from the internet just search for free grunge map and you get these black and white things and you can experiment with a, no a number of them I want to use this one here I got it from textures.com and 
I the problem is I can't find it again to link you to it so I suggest you just look for something uh, and and see what you can come up with anyways I'm gonna open it but like I say take any black and white kind of grungy texture you've got and I'm gonna plug that in down here and you can see what what that has done here now I don't need it connected to the UVs of this I'm just going to leave it like this but I'm going to do a little bit more so I'm going to grab all these I'm going to pull them back out of the way in fact maybe instead of doing that I will take this and I'm going to pull it up here and I mean that looks fine it looks cool uh, by the way I'm going to set this on multiply and then you can play around with the amounts that you want okay so for example like that now it looks really dirty and grungy or you could have some kind of mix to that you can try the other blending modes as well all right I actually don't mind that if you want you can come in here and you can throw in a color ramp and you can put that in there and you can further modify it as you can see it changing ever so slightly there flip that around you can change the color of the wood a little bit something like that so that's looking pretty nice and grungy so just experiment with with different grunge maps and see see which one works best for you the other thing that I would like to do is I would like to use this in the roughness channel so I'm going to add I think maybe one more color ramp down here I'm going to unplug the roughness here. Let's get that out of there. So at this point, I have access to the roughness. I can make it very shiny, very dull. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. Let's maximize that. The grunge map. Drag it into here come back as we plug it in and I'm going to plug this into the roughness okay so now I have the roughness uh, affected where the grunge map is I can adjust this make it less I can make it very wet all right I'm going to change this black I don't want it so rough I'll just bring that up and then again you adjust it to the taste that you that you like so you get this effect and even that may be a little bit too much but there is our wooden palette how it looks will change relatively drastically with the lighting so you may have to try it in different lightings and then adjust your values to what you like okay there we go and there's our wooden palette Okay, so we'll leave it at that now. You can throw that into your scene. You could take these nails and you can play with them, change the color, you can join it, and we are done. All right, so we'll leave it at that and I will see you in the next video.